Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today I have something very special to show off to all of you. As of late, I've been tweaking my Warp Flame Prince build ever since I pushed out that video. It's been extremely hard to figure out what else I can do to make it even better and more efficient. And just as I was starting to give up, I was gifted a trauma staff that shifted everything. I know some of you wanted to see that build truly shine, but I also wanted to make something fresh and use weapons that I rarely use. So after weeks of using the new trauma staff, I've grown to really enjoy its versatility and power. It can stagger and destroy threats that are pressing your team with ease, and best of all, it caters to my fascination with damage over time. Before I get ahead of myself though, let's break down the loadout so you can see where I'm going with all of this. First up, we have the Elise Mark V Blaze Four Sword. This sword used to be my least favorite of the bunch, but I've grown to rely solely on using this weapon for protection and to help spread flames amongst those who breed heresy. With damage to maniacs and flak armored enemies, I usually have no trouble slicing through a vast majority of the squishy mobs. And while I'm slashing away, I wanted to have protection in case things ever got bad. So I took Deflector for the safety from gunners and trash mobs alike. This became a blessing that has so much value due to the passes that I chose. But I'll get to that in a little bit. Next up, I took Blazing Spirit to be able to spread Soul Blaze out amongst the crowd. And again, this is another blessing that has its perks due to our passives. But before we get into that, I want to talk about our secondary. The Equinox Mark III Trauma Force Staff. This thing packs a serious punch. Being an area of effect weapon, you can pull the warp underneath the feet of any threat pushing close to you or your teammates. And with a click of a button, you can release a devastating blast that erupts from the ground sending enemies flying. For my perks on this, I went with damage to flak armored enemies, as well as increased range critical strike chance. Don't worry, there's a method to my madness. For my blessings on this staff, I rolled Warp Nexus which plays very well with what I need this weapon for. Gaining peril is going to be very easy with this weapon, so we want to play carefully, but staying at high peril will also grant us more crit chance. And I wanted more crit chance because I also took Blazing Spirit on the Trauma Staff as well. This is incredible for spreading flames at a distance and clearing hordes before they even get a chance to get close. But again, you'll see where I'm going with all of this. The curios that I went with were two toughness curios and a single max health curio. They all have boost to health and toughness, but they all have different perks on them as well. Those being toughness regen speed, resistance to gunners, and block efficiency. Alright, now let's talk about the talent tree. So this time around, I really wanted to maximize the amount of damage over time that I could do while simultaneously having my toughness regenerate faster than ever before. A majority of the passes and abilities that I've chosen this time have been picked solely for the enjoyment of spreading stacks of soul blaze to almost everything around me. My weapons will feed into that playstyle, and as long as you have good management with your peril, you will excel. Let's start off with my main ability, Venting Shriek. This ability is great for managing your peril generation. You can instantly quell 50% of your peril and has a very low cooldown, which will be even lower when you see what else we can do. With this ability, I took Becalming Eruption for the decrease in peril generation. This is so I can spam my staff or my bleed special action in times of need without worrying about exploding. And you can probably guess where I'm going with this, but Creeping Flames is my final ability modifier as it will tack on stacks of Soul Blaze based on my current peril. Now for my Blitz, I still find Brain Rupture to be very useful. This blitz will only really be used to take out snipers or to kill ranged specialists from a safe spot. I like using this ability whenever I see a teammate struggling in the distance, as you can rely on your weapons to do more for you. Just play to your strengths and seek targets that are vulnerable from a distance. I opted for not getting any other modifiers here because you really won't need it. For my aura, I have Seer's Presence yet again. But what can I say, it's hard to beat the cooldown reduction especially when it helps everyone. Veterans and Zealots can spam heals. Ogren can do Ogren things, and I can light everyone up with my flames very quickly. That being said, this build will focus on cooldown reduction, and to do that, I'm using the Keystone ability Warp Siphon. Since I can kill any elite or specialist with ease, this will come to us almost naturally. And these warp charges will last for a while in between fights. Reserving them for the next ability use is key to maintaining your synergy. For my Keystone modifiers, I really want it to be simple and easy. So I went with Empyrean Empowerment for the increase in base damage with each warp charge that I gain. This paired with Essence Harvest will constantly keep my toughness replenished and keep my Psyker in the action. But because my weapons have an affinity towards Soul Blaze, it made more sense to take Infire Reborn. With this ability, any enemy who dies to my Soul Blaze will feed into my Warp Charges. This just became very easy to gain maximum Warp Charges, and best of all, with Warp Battery, we can gain two more charges. This synergy of recycling Soul Blaze became almost euphoric. I loved having my ability on repeat, just to use it and watch trash mobs burn, only to have them give me my warp charges and ability back even faster. Now it's time to break down the passives, starting with Battle Meditation. This ability can save you in a pinch, especially with the Trauma Staff. 
Since Soul Blaze can be spread out with your Shriek, it can kill targets behind walls and through floors, meaning targets can just burn out over time and die off in the distance. Their death can quell some of your peril in the fight and keep you from going down. Whenever teammates go down, I love having Kinetic Deflection. This can be used multiple ways with this build, but its main function should be to pick up teammates whenever you can. Clear out any mobs hitting them while they're down and pick them up with no worries. Your stamina will be replaced by your peril and we have lots of ways that our peril will actually keep us safe too. Speaking of, one with the warp is another great passive that I have that keeps us alive and well. Since gaining peril will be extremely easy with this build, this passive is a no brainer. Toughness damage reduction is an easy thing to gain since it will be constantly flowing between high to low numbers in peril. And since toughness is going to be a major priority with this build, perilous combustion just adds more fuel to the fire. The damage over time will cycle another warp charge and assist with keeping our toughness up. We can throw even more stacks of soul blaze out with our shriek because with psychonetics aura, every elite or specialist killed by anyone in coherency will just knock an additional 5% off of my cooldown reduction. Puppet master will make sure our coherency reaches a wider radius. 50% is a really nice increase since fanning out while fighting burning heretics happens quite a bit. Since I have a lot of utility around my ability to quell quickly, I took quietude so I can have my toughness regen by 25% every time I use my shriek. This is also really easy to maintain since charging the staff and immediately quelling will go towards gaining toughness too. I took solidity so I never have to feel overwhelmed by incoming horde enemies. A trick that I like to do with the trauma staff is to just aim at my feet whenever I get surrounded. This will blow everyone away, and with solidity I can actually quell quickly in between explosive hits. Another great passive that I would say is almost mandatory with this staff is Soul Stealer. It might sound silly, but replenishing 7.5% of your toughness back upon killing anyone with the staff is insane. I've gone through multiple games with this build, with barely even taking a single point of damage from any melee enemies. And that's solely because of this passive regening my toughness almost instantly. And with peril generation constantly fluctuating, Warp Rider gives me more damage based off of my current peril. You can hit even harder if you get the chance to widen your hits with the Trauma Staff, and this pays off extremely well whenever we're juggling between packs of Elites and Specialists as you'll see towards the end of this video. Since I'm very reliant on Soul Blaze spreading, Wildfire is the final passive in our arsenal. This is great as 4 stacks will immediately be tacked onto any surrounding enemy. This means almost every enemy in our cone of vision will be hit with a flame from something we've done. And through that we gain toughness, warp charges, and damage all at once whenever they die. I even have some great choices in my operative modifiers too. I gain a boost to crit chance making my flames spread even easier for me. I get a boost in health and toughness as well as some toughness damage reduction, a little bit of peril resistance, and best of all, with inspiring presence, we can spread all of that toughness regen to our allies within coherency, becoming a beacon of survivability to everyone that's fighting beside us. I really have to thank you all again for voting for this one. Just like the Ogren build that I made earlier this week, I managed to become obsessed with my Psyker once again. This is already one of my favorite classes to play, but with this build I feel like I can inspire people to try out Psyker for themselves and to show off why people enjoy playing them. The Psyker has so much variety at their fingertips. You have so many choices and utilities that can truly shape the class in different directions. Being supportive while doing massive amounts of damage is what I love doing with any of my classes, but I'm just glad I got the opportunity to show this build off to you. Please leave any feedback or recommendations in the comment section below, as I love hearing your take on things that I may have overlooked. Thank you for voting once again, and it looks like I'm going to be making a Zealot build next. I better get started on that one, but before I do, I just want to say thanks again to my channel members for supporting me here on YouTube. If you would like to see your name on my next video, consider joining the channel. Anyways, thanks for watching, my name is Zen, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Enjoy the rest of the match.
Assuring to know the enemy is so selective. <laughs> Amid this, <laughs> how gratifying! Remain steady. A pair of hundreds that these old ten countries go for. The company of mine! Good 
Life of adventure. How foolish we are in our youth. I don't have dreams. That explains much. Dreams are a form of escape. But for you, there is only the grinding horror of your waking life. Until you break. When did you become so wise in the ways of the magic box? Oh! 
Excessive force authorized. <laughs> 